Let us open John chapter 7, 25 to 36. Guys, can we say thank you to Sam and Paul? They're always doing this on Sunday. Can, you, can we say thank you? Thank you always. Um, let me read 24, 25 first. We'll have responsible reading. Some of the people of Jerusalem therefore said, Is not this the man whom they seek to kill? But we know where this man comes from. And when the Christ appears, no one will know where he, he comes from. I know him, for I come from him, and he sent me. Yet many of the people believed in him. They said, when the Christ appears, will he do more signs than the, this man has done? Jesus then said, I will be with you a little longer, and then I am going to him who sent me. The Jews said, said to one another, where does this man intend to go that we will not find him? Does he intend to go to the, go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? Amen. All right, let us watch a video that I prepared for you. Okay, um, Jean, sir, if I ask you to stop, can you stop? Or can you start it from the beginning? Okay, thank you. All right. You can start. All right, can you stop? What is your idea of him doing? Can you guys see clearly? Okay, what is he doing? Other than the people that I already show you, just think what you think about this, okay? All right, next scene. Now we're looking at him from behind. Stop. All right. Now what you see from, from in front and what you see from behind, you might have different idea of what he's doing. Right? Or do you guys have the same idea of what he's doing? Yeah, you're supposed to have different ideas. All right. Last. <laughs> Who expected to see that at last? Mino, you're a liar. <laughs> all right, now, if you see him, all right, thank you, teacher, and sir, always. If you see him from front, he's running towards you. Many would think oh, he's a robber running away from police. Now we look at him from behind, running towards a guy. We also think he's a robber, but not running away from police. But he's about to steal and destroy or kill someone. But now we're looking at the whole picture. Why is he running so hard towards this guy? To save him. Right? Many times, 
we looking at the moment and then we put our thought in it which is usually your unbelief you make decision by looking at the moment and you live with it for the rest of your life you're you become very narrow-minded and according to your own understanding according to your own um, science that you come up with a resolution or the answer but what if that is unbelief many times our unbelief very logical if you explain anyone why i am thinking in certain way they will they will resonate with you oh this is why so think about it this guy is running like you're looking at him front and then mino is walking towards him you know he's big right and then mino saw him running and mino's now thinking logically this guy must be running from police. So what is Mino going to do? Yeah. He's playing football now. He's going to tackle him. Right? And then this guy will fall. But what's going to happen to the guy this guy is about to save? He's going to die. Unbelief. You believe unbelief is simply your thought? Unbelief might cause a death of someone around you but you don't really know that's unbelief because until you see that person dead because you think it's very logical your unbelief as a rationale still another word for logic rationale means you're very objective which means you think you are smart you are right but again you're just looking at the moment you're not looking at the whole picture how narrow-minded can you become and unbelief is very scientific educational it's been passed down to you it's been rooted deep in you this is characteristic of unbelief. Sounds right. Sounds good. Resonate with you. Without you knowing this, I holding on to unbelief. What we fall into is this. Many times you fall into complaint. And what do we do? Uh, after complaint we also blame and then you start a frowning face so your face is always frowning you don't even know how to smile you don't even know how to be happy you don't know how to be satisfied you're just leaving here all right you keep complaining you're blaming frowning face this will ultimately unbelief will ultimately make you judge God you are judging God if he's right or wrong not only that you are actually leaving God by judging him. When you're judging him, you put God under your control, under your, uh, under, your, under your decision, make him sound wrong and you sound right, which will make you depart from what is fundamental to your lives. Not only that, when people become atheists or when they start to reject the fact that God exists, 
they not only leave him, you know what we do? We add one more. We abandon and we curse God. This is end result of unbelief. Romans chapter 10, verse 2 to 3. It says, I see you have zeal, zeal of God, zeal for God. I see you have heart for him. But it says, it's not according to the knowledge. Which means, it's not according to Christ. The knowledge of God is Christ. It's not according to Christ. And it says, you being ignorant of righteousness of God. And what is the righteousness of God, guys? Knowledge of God is Christ and righteousness of God. You know what it is? Righteousness of God is also Christ. So you are not following the knowledge. You're being ignorant. And he says, you seek to establish your own righteousness. It seems like it's your, I see your heart. For God, towards God, yet you're not following. At the same time, you're establishing your own. And he says, you did not submit to God's righteousness. Because you're actually, what you're doing is establishing your own partisan. Against God. Alright, so one more. Now, this guy, is, you're... Mino is standing in front. Sam is fast. So Sam saw this guy's running from behind. And Sam and Mino looked at each other. This guy's running in between them. Sam and Mino looking at each other's eyes. They're like, and we know we got to catch him. So Mino's tackling him. And then Sam's flying sidekick. And this guy fell, demolished. All right, what's the result of this? What's going to happen to this guy who's about to be saved? This guy will die. That's a result of unbelief. You think you're doing the right thing, but you're not looking at the whole picture, not looking at the word of God, not following the righteousness and knowledge and wisdom of God, which is Christ. You're not only making him dead, you also kill this guy, you tackle him. So by your righteousness, righteousness, how many did you already kill in the sin? Two. And then where are you going? Now you're ultimately killing yourself. You're going to jail. Because you kill, you literally kill two people. That's unbelief remnant. It's not simply, oh, this is my thought. Oh, I like to do this. A look at the scene. Tell me if I'm wrong. Well, you are wrong. So can you bless each other? You're wrong. One person, I'm sorry if I mention this person. She posted saying, everyone makes me feel depressed. You know what you're supposed to say to her? You're wrong. Because they're not making you depressed. They're helping you to hold on to only Christ. So bless each other again. You are wrong. One remnant, he got a he he got a he got email from his teacher. Your son's using phone too much. And then his mom took the phone away. He got mad. I asked him why. Because he didn't actually use the phone. What he did, he touched the phone. Like this. And then he said, according to him. This is only according to him. Teacher caught him. Touching the phone. Checking the clock. And then teacher said, don't use a phone. And teacher start to, you know, complaining. Like, you're ruining my class. Like, all that. He got mad. Because he felt that's very unfair. What did I do? Other than touching it. 
And then, of course, his mom got mad. Were you using the phone? And he explained to mom, mom, I didn't. I touched the phone. But who, who have a parent who will understand you or who will believe teacher? Usually, parents listen to teacher. So what she did, let me take your phone away. Now he got mad. Oh my God. All I did, touching the phone. And now I don't have phone for the rest of two weeks, three weeks. All right, now I explained to him. All right, what if it began with you touching the phone, no one caught you, now using the phone, no one caught you, addicted to phone, no one caught you, and your teacher and your parents not care about you using the phone, and then now you're addicted to phone, you start to use your phone to buy drugs, and you became murder. That would have been your future. But God knew, he stopped you, took it away, he made you stop from being murdered. So I told him, you got to say thank you to your mom. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, I want to, but I can't. I don't want to. Remnants, unbelief is wrong. Amen? So can you bless each other? You're wrong. Again, bless them one more time. You are always wrong. I met this lady, she grew up in Chicago, and she went to school, Japanese school, next to our church. Amazing, right? I met her in LA, and when I met her, she like, oh, I went to, I grew up in Chicago, and it turns out to be this Japanese school. So we're like, oh, that, wow, wow, wow. Anyways, she went back to Japan, she got into relationship. After 10 years of relationship, her boyfriend said, sorry, I'm gay. They were in same work, same company. They were dating. But she loved him so much. She said, I can still date you and have relationship with you without touching you. That's called platonic love. Which is usually impossible. If you're doing, I think you have mental problems. But she said, Okay you, okay, you could be gay, but I, I want to still love you. And this gay guy rejected her. That's so weird, right? He said, I can't do this anymore. He rejected. She's in the same work with him. And if you see the guy all the time, even after breakup, that breaks your heart more. She decided to come back to the United States. After came back, she felt this emptiness and all these negative feelings which drove her to heresy. She fell into wrong religion. At the last stage of her training, she met Tarapang. She accepted Christ. Tarapang talked about breathing, breath, right? A lot, breathing prayers. That's what she used to learn from heresy. So she's like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. So she was able to accept Tarapang term. Not weirdly, but very um, comfortably. She became a child of God. We started to have tarapang. She became an acupuncturist. She opened a hospital office in Beverly Hills. And she's praying to share the gospel to same Japanese who's playing in MLB. Who do you know plays in MLB Japanese in LA? Shohei Otani. The best baseball player in the history. And she's praying to share the gospel. Now, looking at her, her moment, man, my boyfriend is gay. What do you see in that scene? Do you see hope? Do you see future? She was simply an employee to a company back then in Japan. She's here running her office as an acupuncturist. And she went to mission trips now. And she's healing people. 
people heals so many rich white people and now she's been meeting many Jewish as well and she's sharing the genuine gospel to them remnants where are you are you in unbelief are you in your own thoughts so remnants bless each other you are always wrong today we have to believe this God our battle is not physical battle our battle is spiritual battle what we need to know is this And you must believe this as well. Satan has been only sinning from the beginning. We have to believe in that. No matter how good sounds he brings to you, all he did from the beginning, he's been only sinning from the beginning. Revelation chapter 12, 9, it says, He is deceiver of the whole world. He is a serpent and he is a deceiver. So what he does, he is only deceiving you, remnants. He can never bring good to you. He only deceives you, Paul. If I say I love you so much, it's a lie. Amen? That's right. We have to believe now Satan is wrong. But many times we misunderstand he might be right. Because it sounds right. Sounds scientific. It's logical. Listening to God is not right. Remnant Satan, the identity of him is he is a deceiver of the whole world. And believe he is a liar, he's a murderer, he never speaks truth. Amen. Do you believe in that? Michael, do you believe what? That's right, he's a liar, murder. And he never speaks truth. He can stand on the truth. He has no truth in him. What does he do? Ephesians 6, 11, He's using his scheme. Scheme is to dare. Is there only again. Not to save your life, but to destroy your life. Destroy sometimes looks prosperity. Destruction sometimes looks going to good college. Destruction sometimes looks being successful. Regardless of how it looks, what he does, it is only the scheme of the devil. Verse 16, he's only shooting flaming darts to burn you. Burn your brain, burn your energy, burn your thoughts, burn your life. He wants to bring your life back to ashes. He wants to bring emptiness to your life. He wants to bring depression to your life. He wants to bring worries to your life. He wants to create vain in your life. That's all he does. Flaming darts. He's never for you. Do you believe? Amen. Satan is wrong, guys. He's wrong. He's running. Purling like a roaring lion. 
seeking someone to devour. He's like a lion seeking someone to devour. And who does he seek to devour? Those who have anxieties, who worries, who fear. He's seeking only to eat you and bombing you. Bombing? 토해내는 게 뭐야, 영어로? Bombing? Vomiting. He's doing that. Only doing chewing. He doesn't even swallow. He will vomit. <laughs> That's what he does. You don't taste good. You taste bad. But why do we still accept him though? That's what we need to know. Why do we still accept him? 2 Corinthians 11, 14. Because he acts like an angel of light. He comes to you like an angel. Great sound. Great things. And when he comes to you as an angel, 2 Thessalonians This is why we're deceiving. It says, he comes with the power, false signs, wonders, wicked deception. He's not coming to you as an ignorant or stupid. He comes before you as an angel of light with power, false signs, wonders, wicked deception. That's what he does. Remnants bless each other. You're wrong. When we fall into his wicked deception, this is what's happening. Why am I telling ourselves, or confessing ourselves that we're wrong? Holding on to his deception, listening to him means... We give no room to God to have His word inside. Again, this belief is not simply, oh, I have this belief against God. John 8, 37, you have no room to have His word in you means you seek to kill me. Do you guys understand? No word means, it's not simply, oh, I forgot the perfect message. Oh, I'm not just holding on to prayer journal today. Whenever I'm asking Michael, did you do prayer journal? He's like, oh, not today. But I'm always asking me, how about yesterday? Oh, not yesterday. How about two days ago? Oh, not two days ago. It's not simply, I don't have the word. It says, you seek to kill me with your righteousness. All right, now let's think about the scene again. This guy's running. Mino and Sam. And then teacher Ginster, all of a sudden, Mino, Sam, stop. They're going to blame teacher Ginster. Why? Because they are thinking they're doing what is right. But teacher Ginster is stronger than them. He will slap Mino, slap Sam. And then they'll be mad at teacher Ginster, but at the end, finally, they will, when they know it was for this guy to save his life, not only his life, but this guy who's about to help him and also my life, you will know, wow, that was grace. I was wrong. Bless each other. I'm wrong. Don't only tell each other you're wrong. Bless each other. I'm wrong too. God is right, remnants. We must understand he's always lying, never the truth. God is right. Amen. God is true. Amen. No one is accountable for you. 
No one's responsible for you. They will let you do, let, they will say this will bring you happiness. But if it doesn't, they will again blame on you. You made the wrong choice. Sometimes, have you ever had conflict or argue with someone like this? You remember what they said and you did it the way they told you, but you failed it. So you came to them saying, you told me to do that. You know what they answer you? I don't remember. Have you ever had an argue that way? I don't remember. Sometimes they don't really remember. Sometimes they purposely say they don't remember to win the argue. No one is responsible for you other than God. They just throw whatever they've learned. They just speak, spit out, spit out. They just speak out whatever that's been they've learning, whatever worked for them, but it might not work for you. But they sound like it's going to work for you as well. In the United States, what's the first major everyone's trying to major in to make money in the future. Do you guys know what it is? Computer science. You know what NVIDIA CEO said, had an interview a few days ago. He says if he were to go back to college again, he will never major in computer science. But what if you guys all already major in science and computer science and he says, I'm not going to do the computer science. And if you're telling him, oh, we did it because we wanted to be like you. And he says, who told you to do it? That was your choice. I'm not going to take care of it. That's the world you're living in. No one takes care of you. Remnants. God takes care of his children. So repeat after me. God is right. God is true. Bless each other. I'm wrong. That means you are wrong. Why? Why only God? If you know this Bible verse, Son of God appeared to destroy work of the devil. It's not simply changing my thoughts. Many people have an empty hope. Meditation will change my thoughts. No. Since it is grabbed by Satan, if you don't break down Satan, you cannot change your thoughts. So Christ is here first to destroy work of the Satan. Amen. Colossians Chapter 2, 14 to 15, he canceled all the record of death, nailing to the cross, disarmed the rulers, authorities, put them to open shame by triumphing them. Only Christ had triumphed the rulers and authorities of this age who had a record of death against you. Christ put them into open shame. Teach me if there is any other who has, who has put Satan into open shame other than Christ. Did anyone ever teach you who destroyed the work of Satan? They couldn't. They didn't. Only Christ. Hebrew chapter 2, 14 14 to 15, it says, Christ destroyed the one who has power of death. He delivered you who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. Only Christ destroyed the one has power of death. Only Christ Deliver you who were subject to lifelong slavery through fear. Christ has set you free. Amen. Remnants. This should be the content of our grace. 
I know there are many grades you can experience. I got accepted to better college. Congratulations for your car, your house. You must be happy because of your girlfriend so pretty. There are tons of things you can describe as grace. But the fundamental contents of our grace should be Christ alone. Everything additional doesn't have to be there. We don't count on them. We count on Christ alone. He delivered us. In Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. Law of spirit of life set you free from sin and death. That Christ, the law of spirit of life in Christ set you free from sin and death. Amen. Remnant, the power and the contents of the gospel is not program. It's not a program of the church. Power and the contents of the gospel is solely and only Christ. Amen. There are thousand churches with better programs, but if it's missing Christ, Satan's playing with them. Remnants of contents and everything that we have to enjoy should be only Christ. Do not ask additional blessings. If he gives, if he gives us, great. If he doesn't, I don't mind. Because I'm given what is perfect. Christ is everything. John chapter 14, 6. Does anyone know this Bible verse? Jesus answered. I am the way, the truth, and the life. His disciples were filled with disbelief. I want to see the Father. And he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to Father except through me. Remnant, the only way, the truth, and the life is only Christ. Amen. Again, no one is responsible for your life. They don't care, actually. Only God takes accountability on you. Why? He created you. Why they don't? They don't, they didn't create you. So you don't belong to them. So why would they care about you? Only God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Deepen your faith in Christ alone. What do we confess? Matthew 16, 16. What would you confess? Who he is? Finally, we confess. It's not revealed to you through blood or flesh, but by the Father in heaven. What do we confess? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. I will build a church upon the rock. Gates of haze will not prevail against you. I will give you the key to the heaven. That's Jesus we believe. This Jesus, Hebrew chapter 13, 8. You know what the Bible confesses about this Jesus? God is same yesterday, today, forever. Amen. People throw words at you and they die. So they're no longer there. But God throws word at you. He's still living and active. He's fulfilling the word. Not forfeiting what he has spoken to you. Who would you believe? God or people who will disappear soon? Would you believe God who is forever? Or people who will disappear tomorrow. Have faith in God alone remnants. Sometimes there will be challenging. To challenge your gospel. 
this Thursday, last Thursday, I had a tarapang. She asked me, if a baby die, where is he going? What is your answer to that? If a baby dies, where is he going? Heaven? Hell? She gave me a story of her sister. And her sister had a baby. And baby died in young age. Before he grew up. That, that, act, that became such a distress to her life. She couldn't go to sleep. She was very bothered by it. She was literally in pain losing her kid. One day she had a dream. In the heaven, this group of people welcoming her baby. And the baby went to the heaven. That day, her distress lifted up. And she felt comfort in her heart. And this lady asked me, can you answer me if baby went to hell or heaven? I, I told her, baby went to hell. Why? Because without Christ, everyone is born sinner and everyone is unrighteous. There is no one righteous. And she said, I can't believe in that. You don't believe in the truth doesn't mean that I got to compromise my truth. But you know what? In order to earn people, nowadays many church compromise truth. But you know what she said at the end though? She said, I can't believe what you're saying, but I want to know about it. She asked me if she can have a Bible. So I'm going to bring her the Bible, read the Bible, bring her to truth. There may be someone opposing you, but that doesn't mean that you got to compromise your faith. You shouldn't compromise your truth. What you know, what you learn from the Bible, stand on it. Be convicted and confirm the truth. Don't let anyone to shake you. In Christ, this is a characteristic of our faith. Remnants, this is our faith. Uncompromising faith. Our faith Is unwavering. This is our faith. But many people compromise. And let me explain you how we compromise in our context. Think about the ark. God told Noah to build the ark where? Does anyone remember? Where does he have to build his ark? On the mountain. On the middle of the mountain or top of the mountain? How do we compromise our faith? It's not that I'm not building. I am building. Guess where you're going to build your ark though? You know where you're going to build your ark? You're going to build your ark here. And you're saying I'm following God's word. This is compromising. No, if people ask, you're not following the word. Well, look at me. I'm building the ark. But you know where you're building the ark? You're building the ark at the bottom of the mountain. Or if you have a little better faith, you will build your ark on the middle of the mountain. And then you're saying God's going to work. This is compromising. Remnants, Noah built the ark on the top. He didn't compromise. You don't abandon the truth. That will abandon you. Don't let Satan play with you. Stand firm in the living word of God. Think about the Red Sea. How would you compromise your faith before Red Sea? Some of you is ready and you know we're going to Red Sea. So you know what you, some of you are going to do? I'm sure if you're smart. You will start build your own boat. With your money, with your skill. And you said it's because God blessed me. He's preparing me to 
cross the Red Sea. No. It's because you don't believe He will split the water. You're building your skill and your money. Is that faith? Some of you believe in your physical strength so much that you will start to learn, take a lesson how to swim. Thinking that you will swim across the Red Sea. All right, does it mean that it's because you like swimming that you're taking the lesson? Or is it the reaction to your unbelief? I'm not saying we shouldn't build the boat. I'm not saying we shouldn't learn how to swim. What I'm saying is, what you're doing could be the result of your unbelief remnants. You got to know that. Is it really, am I really following this because it's God's journey? Or is it because I couldn't believe in God that I make my own way to cross the Red Sea? And while you compromise your faith, you will look down on people who cannot do anything. Jagger needs rich. He's using his money build a boat to cross the Red Sea. I am poor. And Jagger will look down on me saying, Pastor, you're stupid. You don't have money. God didn't bless you enough. I think you're fake. Just get on my boat. I'll help you. Somebody learning how to take a swimming lesson will also look down on Deacon Cos. You're poor, you're stupid, you're old, you're bold. I don't know what does it do with swimming. But somebody will look down on him and say, it's because you're old. Until your age, you didn't learn how to swim. You're stupid. This compromising faith people will look down on us. And they start to be on the boat. They start first. Somebody starts to swim. And guess what happened in the middle? Red is split. It, and I'm walking there swimming. I'm going to look at him. <laughs> you stupid. I'm walking. Who's going to be faster? Walking on the ground or swimming in the water? What? You are stupid. You're wrong. Swimming. It's never faster than running or walking. You will look at them swimming next to you and you will see, told you, man, God, you're going to split the water. Remnants. When you compromise faith, it doesn't look like it. Because maybe 5% of you is still following the word of God. Remnants do not compromise God's word. Think about lions then. Do you guys know the story of Daniel? What was, there was a document that, are, that is signed only to destroy Daniel. Because Daniel's worshipping other God. Not the God of that age, but Daniel's worshipping the God of Israel. He's worshipping Jesus who will come. Looking at Jerusalem. Alright, now you saw the document. You know this is targeting you. This is what you could have done. Close the window. Pray in secret. So that no one can find you. That you ever prayed. And you'd say. I didn't compromise my faith. But actually. You're using your brain to compromise faith. You're compromising God. Who's about to save you. Remnants, do not compromise truth. If you start to compromise truth, that will bring people around you to compromise the truth. If you start to have disbelief, that will bring disbelief people around you. Remnants, having the uncompromising truth and put your faith in the truth that's not changing. Today, John chapter 7, 30, it says, people want to kill him, but no one laid hand on him because his hour had not yet come. Pastor Shin says, it's because God didn't allow 
In other words, he says, if you are facing anything, you got to know God allowed it. Victory is guaranteed. John 16, 33. He says, I have already, I have overcome the world. So when you're facing problems, bless each other. Why did God allow you this? Can you bless each other? Why did God allow you a problem? Find the answer in the Word of God. Find the answer in the Word of God. Remnants, a person this week got depressed. You know what I did to help her? I opened the prayer journal, shared the scripture of that prayer journal, shared that to this person. Sometimes you sound like your word has strength. I'm sorry. Your word is vain. You know what is the answer? Open prayer journal, open purpose message, share with them. But you know why we don't do that? Because it's not the answer to you. Prayer journal is not the answer to you. Purpose message is not the answer to you. Scripture is not the answer to you. So you learn to comfort others with your own word so far. That's why you're giving them wrong instructions. Remnants. Find the answer in the word of God. You find the answer in the word of God. Let that be habit to you. If you're confused, find the answer in the word of God. Don't stand as the answer to anybody. I really want to ask you, what if I follow Jagon because he's so smart, but what if he's wrong? That I became wrong. Do you think he's going to be responsible for my life? Not at all. No one's going to be responsible for you. They just throw whatever in their minds. They might be a little more experienced than you. They might be a little more wiser, more wise. But what we take is the word of God. Nothing is stronger than the word of God. Nothing is better than the word of God. And nothing is the answer other than the word of God. Remnants. Word. Find the answer in the word. So guess why you have a problem? For you to find the answer in the word. Why did God allow you conflict? For us to renew and renewal takes place when we pray. God wants you to pray. Ask Him. Kneel before Him. Let Him be the partisan of your life. Remnants, can you pray? He wants you to pray. Do you have crisis? This will be opportunity and this as an opportunity for word evangelization. You know why people don't take crisis as opportunity because they only seek their benefits in the midst of crisis. But if you seek God's absolute plan to save soul, you will see that is the opportunity for word evangelization. Amen. So many times we're seeking God's plan without concerning word evangelization. 237, 5,000 people grew. You don't see God's plan only because you seek your own benefit in the middle of problems and crisis. But remnants, if you open your spiritual eyes, He's actually giving you an opportunity to experience evangelism in your life. That's what we see in the midst of our crisis, conflict, and problems. Everything, what you're going through, will only serve as a platform. 
It will raise you as a watchman. You'll be the antenna to save all. Remnants, everything you're facing is only the guidepost in his covenant journey for him to build a body in your life. Remnants, we are wrong. God is right. Amen. Mino is wrong. God is right. David is wrong. God is right. Benjamin is wrong. God is right. Deacon cause is wrong, God is right. Do you feel offended by it? Yeah? You're wrong. Remnants, amen. Remnants, let's bless each other one more time. You are wrong. Nathan, you sitting over there is wrong. God is right. Always. Let's have time of prayer. And we will praise. Father, please bless us to realize we no longer depend on our own thoughts our own rationale or logic father have us ears to listen to you have us heart to listen to you father if there are problems bless us go into the word of god if there are conflict let us know it's a time of renewal of our prayer father if there are crisis let us know it's opportunity for word evangelization Lord, the victory is guaranteed. You have already overcome the world. Our faith is in you. We're not compromising. Remnants, all the worshiper, let us confess. I come. I come before you, O Lord. You know my everything, my whole. I place it in your hand. Lord, as I come before you now, I come before you, O oh Lord. I lay all my thoughts down at your feet. I 
lay all of my thoughts down at your feet. Just cry. 
Let us close our eyes, gather our hearts, let us pray. Now the grace of Jesus Christ, uh, which is unwavering, uncompromising, which is unending, and the love of our Father God, which is steadfast, faithful, and indwelling guidance, working and communion of the Spirit, which is guaranteed and promised, be upon all the remnants who will experience God is right, who will never compromise the truth, who will never lose hold of their faith, be upon all the remnants from now and forever. Amen.